Bucci. Bucci. Doing good, man. How are you, Bungle? Are you the Bungle? Ladies and uh, gentlemen, Bungle, hope you're doing well, and I hope you're having a great day. Today, we are going over and listed the World War II free-to-play first-person shooter, and kind of a topic that's kind of hot in the community right now is really, you know, ban the FG-42. Restrict it to the paratrooper class only. Only have that paratrooper class carry the FG-42, since there was only a very limited amount created or made during World War II, and they were only given out to Flagellamir units. And like I said, I don't speak German, so, you know, my pronunciation's probably bad on that. But generally, there is a very big uproar right now in the enlisted community over, you know, this is kind of like, kind of reaching a point where it's going to explode, I would say, just because we've seen this, this weapon's always been talked about since closed beta, and even to now, and with recent additions such as the semi-auto nerf, and it, it, to be honest, the fire rate was it was nerfed. Uh, now, do semi-autos perform worse than they did before? That's kind of debatable. But yes, you know, one of the weapons that weren't touched in this was the FG-42. And we're kind of going to go down here in this discussion video. We're going to go talk about, you know, why, why is there so much just anger and hatred? A lot of people are just getting very, very upset about the FG-42. And then we're going to go talk about, you know, is it broken? You know, my thoughts kind of devil's advocate approach really on what's going on here with it. And lastly, going forward, what can we do to kind of fix this issue? So without further ado, let's begin. So going over it, you know, why? Well, you know, what's going on? So if you're watching this on my channel, which I think some of you out there are using the enlisted forum, the enlisted Reddit, of course, engage in my YouTube polls and commentaries and stuff on those. But generally speaking, in, you know, let's say free-to-play games, usually they have discords, they have forums and everything like that. Well, Enlisted has the official Enlisted forum and the Enlisted Reddit. And they kind of have engagements with the community members and everything like that. And kind of what I see, I kind of just like to browse the Enlisted forum and Reddit, I, you know, as I say, lurk, right? I don't really post or do anything there. I just kind of look at the content and kind of laugh a little bit because some of the stuff is just kind of out there. But yeah, the Enlisted forum, I, I see it a bunch. And same with the Enlisted Reddit. A lot of people making posts about the FG-42 that it shouldn't be the way it is right now that you can equip it in troopers, you can equip it with your engineer, you can equip it, you can equip it with your flame trooper. Just, it has a wide variety. And, you know, with troopers, right, you can take out nine into that. Battle. So nine troopers with an FG-42, yeah, it's just a lot to take out into combat. I really did review on the weapon. You know, the weapon is a very, very good platform. It has a 20-round magazine, but it can be fired in fully auto or semi-auto, depending on what you want to use. So yes, there's this weapon that hasn't been affected or was really kind of categorized in the semi-auto nerf. So what's going on right now is a lot of people are upset because weapons like, let's say, the M1 Carbine Carbine, the M1 Grand, the Gewer 43 all perform way worse than they originally did, but the FG-42 kind of remains not touched. Now, moving down to, you know, is it broken? Is it broken, Bungle? You know, kind of what's their approach here? And, you know, the thing is, is that what quantifies the FG-42? I know it was like, what, the ABT-40 or something the Soviets get in the Battle of Berlin. Um, you know, these semi-auto hybrid weapons that select fire, the M2 Carbine that people have mentioned and brought up that felt that the M2 Carbine is OP, which in my opinion, the M2 Carbine is not a very good weapon platform. I think I, I really do not like it just because of the recoil and the damage it does. It just isn't good. Like by the time you kill someone, you pretty much burnt through your magazine. So I'm not really a fan of the M2 Carbine, nor I don't understand why there's some people out there that think that it's, you know, overpowered. Because generally, you don't see a lot of allies, at least from my gameplay, playing as Germans in the Invasion Army campaign. You do not see a lot of allies running around the M2 Carbine. It's usually M1 Grand, the Grease Gun, you know, the M1 Carbine, M1 Grand. You know, that's what I'm saying is debatable. You know, kind of what's the category, you know, what are we going to categorize these semi-auto slash select fire weapons? You know, are they going to be, you know, in their own class system? Are they overpowered? And... My take on it, you know, a devil's advocate approach, and I've kind of been like this with the whole game. I don't think the bombers should have been nerfed. I really don't think aircraft should have been nerfed at all. Because to be honest, they're really useful, you know, not really that useful right now. They're really useless. And the problem with them is that generally, if you're trying to do a bomb run with a 500 pound bomb, you know, you end up taking out one person. I'm like, really? Whereas in the past, you could, in the past, like I had a game one time where I literally turned the game around with getting like 30 plus kills 
playing as the Germans because we were getting totally destroyed on our last objective that we had to defend. And I got on the GU-188, the, you know, allies didn't get any planes in the air at all. So I was able just to keep bombing the, uh, you know, advancements, taking out jumbos, taking out infantry, and I, you know, turned the game around. So, you know, having that capability is great. And I know a lot of people are just like, oh, it's, you know, cash spam and all this other stuff. But, you know, just seeing stuff like that get nerfed without that, that came out of left field. I know a lot of people were like very upset because they wanted the aircraft nerfed anyway. But, you know, going forward, it kind of rendered it useless in my opinion. I really don't use aircraft that much unless there's, if the enemy's like swarming the objective and they're all kind of, you know, nested there. And yeah, it makes sense to drop a bomb there. But generally speaking, it's just not as useful as it used to be. Same with the semi-autos. I really don't see where this update came from anywhere. I, I don't know who, I don't know if they just listened to the little, I don't know like who they're listening to or where they're getting their feedback from. But yeah, that really came out of left field. There's a lot of bigger issues in the game, such as like having an enemy tank turret that's facing you register on your client that it has a turret towards your side or backwards or whatever. So when you're aiming, you're thinking you're gonna get a good kill. And it turns out, no, it's actually firing directly at you, even though the turrets aim sideways in your client. So very frustrating dealing with that and seeing all this stuff happen where they're just not prioritizing it. And does the FG-42 need to be nerfed? In my opinion, really, I'm a Liazi fair approach, devil's advocate here with everything, but honestly, we got other stuff going on with the PPSH taking out people and you know, melting them. And I, I really I really don't like the nerf everything mentality just because, in my opinion, you know, if one side's got a good weapon and another side's got a good weapon, it should check out. I mean, usually the Guru 43 Kurtz is, you know, OP, in my opinion, a very strong weapon that you can take out and use, but generally you can get killed by someone with a bolt action if they know what they're doing. So uh, I just, you know, I understand the argument against it and I understand the argument for it. Personally, I just think they really, they should just stop messing with game mechanics and fix on game bugs because there's a lot of bugs that are still in the game that they have not fixed and they keep doing these things where they want to go and, you know, adjust the game, like the machine gun nerf, I don't think that was necessary. Um, just, you know, M1 Carbine was nerfed way back when too. So just, it's just these continuous nerfs, nerfs, nerfs. I don't really see anything getting buffed. And it just makes me wonder like, who, what are they trying to do here? Like, I really don't understand. Like the PBSH, if the PBSH got nerfed, then I would kind of understand why, because it's a very, very strong weapon. If the FG-42 got nerfed in this update, then I can understand because it's a strong weapon. But going after weapons that generally not a lot of people use and not is not really that good. Like I don't know, Gear Forty Three, uh, Gear Forty Three, I think is is not really a good weapon. But just to see it get nerfed too is just kind of like I, I don't know where they're getting their data from. So moving forward, you know, going forward, what what should we do to rectify this? And my big proponent is is of a dev server. You know, I know a lot of people are probably gonna get upset at this, but. A good comparisons to Wargaming with World of Tanks, World of Warships, and their little community over there when they do sandboxes and public test servers and stuff like that. And the reason why those games are still continuing to be successful despite people saying, yeah, this game is dying. It's been, di I mean, World of Tanks has been dying since it first came out. Like, it's still going strong. Same with World of Warships. Yes, those games have really paid to, pay to win, pay for fun mechanics into it that I really don't like. But generally speaking, the game still is going strong because they test their stuff before they release it. And even with War Thunder, it does the same exact thing. A Gaijin-made game that has a dev server, so they test stuff, so they understand, like, okay, if this isn't going to be you know, received too well, we're going to take a step back, adjust it, and then come and release the patch when it's live. I, we don't see this with Enlisted at all. There, there's just no, like, testing grounds. So you can test what they're trying to do, what these devs are trying to do. So... That's the thing when people say about dark flow being mysterious and developers being mysterious, like that's kind of the thing is like, how is this like for me as a content creator, like I don't know what they're gonna nerf next, honestly. They have a track record here and I've said this before multiple times in my videos that Enlisted has a tendency to come out and nerf stuff. And I know a lot of people got upset because a lot of the semi-auto you know, premium squads like the US engineer bundle uses the Johnson uh, rifle got nerfed in a way with its fire rate, right? So just a lot of, a lot of just not testing, not communicating with the community. And as a result, we always get these controversies that will come out. Seems to be like every month. I hope it doesn't get to the point like every week, but just numerous controversies, numerous drama, really what they need to do, communicate with the community, make a dev server, have a testing grounds. So that way content creators, 
players, people that really love the game can go play it and be like, hey, I don't think this is a good idea because this, so they can give that feedback that, hey, it's not a good idea. It's not performing well. Why are you doing this? It doesn't really seem necessary. Just focus on the bugs. So you focus on the bugs and then you do the dev servers. You can test whatever crazy idea you want to try out. Then I'm pretty sure the community is going to be a lot happier and it'd be less of these like just angry people on the forum, drama coming out every other week. So other than that, I've reached this point video. New viewer, possibly new subscriber. I hope today is the day that earned your subscription. Having your sub and mash that like button does help me with the YouTube algorithm. Returning sub, returning viewer. Let's be honest, none of you watch my videos. Hashtag Bungles Christmas stockings. What are you going to do for Christmas? Are you getting a stocking? Just lay your shoes out for St. Nick. Other than that, hope you all have a great day. Take care.